Well, you know, the one thing that we've said in the, in, in the game was the, the turnovers, uh, making sure we have to cut those down. Uh, and a lot of that was first game jitters, first, you know, preseason game, the excitement, the energy. But it's one of those things that we got to make sure that we're taking care of the basketball. That's part execution, uh, partly timing, but our ability to just make the right play uh, and the simple play. Follow movements after the game, and even getting to this now, that the pick and roll for him was something that maybe not new, but he hadn't done that in, in college. It, was that something you and your coaching staff had to kind of practice going, like, we're going to, to your point, experiment, we're going to be putting you in this position a lot more just so you can get those reps in before the game day? Well, that's going to be part of it. The work that we, we do in practice is going to, we've got to do that individual drills, you know, the timing of when to make passes, uh, when to get downhill and attack the rim, when to make the pass out to the perimeter. But those are the, the decision-making process that he's going to have to go through. Uh, that we're asking all these guys to do. Um, you know, you talk about what Franz did last year in some ways that he started to move towards that a little bit more. That's going to be the similar situation to follow, being able to make the decisions out of the pick and roll. But that's just going to take reps and it's going to take time. And what do you think the, that transition is so different from the tunnel? Is it, is it the speed? Is it the, is that really it in terms of? I think, I, th I think it is with a lot of the young guys coming into the league. It tends to be the speed, the timing, the pace, and obviously playing with different teammates, understanding the when and the where. And these guys are just going to have to continue to play together. The combinations that we put on the floor, they're going to just understand the different reads. Like Wendell will be a different roller than Mo Bamba. Mo Bamba will be a different roller than, than, uh, than, uh, than Bowl. So it's just the timing and, and the getting familiar with your teammates understanding how you're making cer certain passes. And then in different spaces on the floor, you've got to feel all those spots. And that will eliminate a lot of our tur turnovers and our, our ability to take care of the basketball with those reads and the timing and recognition of what's happening on the floor. That's, it's exactly right. So it's basically it's, it's going to boil down to the slowing down the pace of the game, recognizing your reads before you have to try to draw to, to you getting in the gap. So if you, if you take, for instance, coming off the side pick and roll and there's someone sitting there ready to help out, you just move the ball to the man that's wide open. That's the one thing. We talk about quick decisions, but trying to see those decisions before beforehand, before you have to really read that defender sitting there you want to make that pass before you have to try to get down down to the gap to try to force the issue. We hear, we hear, you know, it's kind of a cliche with young teams, especially that mm -hmm. the game has to slow down down for them. How do you go about kind of getting the game to slow down for them? Is it just a matter of reps? Is it just a matter? You know, RJ mentioned watching film. Yeah. Like, is it something that just kind of clicks with young players at a certain at a certain point? Like, how do you how do you go about kind of slowing that game down? For them? Philip, it's all the above. It really is. It's it's film. It's it's more reps, individual practice. Our coaches do a great job of sitting down and watching film with these guys. And then it's watching it as a group, having them communicate with one another because they have to talk about, hey, it may be RJ and Paolo in a pick and roll, or it may be Cole and Wendell in a pick and roll. They've got to communicate with one another to talk about what they're doing in that timing. So it's, it's film, it's communication, it's more work on the floor individually. And then you got to get in the game real time when we get up and down in scrimmage, they've got to feel that with five guys on the floor. Do you get a sense just from what you've seen in practices, first preseason game, it's going to be a physical team, a team that's not afraid of kind of mixing it up in the paint? That's what, that's the demand, right? We talk about being physical uh, without fouling. We say that often, and obviously we fouled a ton last game. And you don't mind the physicality, but we have to be smart in how we're being, how we're being physical. It can't be the fouls at the rim. We want to do a better job of protecting the rim first and the, not the swipe down fouls or the reaching fouls. It's got to be my body's in position to either take a charge or contest the shot. But I don't want to swipe down to draw, you know, and ones and those type of fouls. We talked about it last year a lot with Jalen, how he played quarterback mm -hmm. in high school. Paolo played a little bit of football growing up. Do you kind of sense that they have a football background just in the way that they play their aggression? Now, the team's not afraid of physical. And that's the one thing that our guys, are. Uh, it, it makes our coaching staff and our, our guys proud of that. They're not afraid to hit people. Um, we just got to make sure we just keep drill, drilling that and working that, understanding how we have to be physical versus just running around and just t hitting people for no apparent reason. It's got to be more, we have to be smarter about how we go about doing it. You've had a game now and strung together several practices after the cancellation last week. 
game tomorrow, Friday. But how important is it for these guys to kind of start getting into that routine of training camp to get an idea, especially for like Paolo and Caleb, to get an idea of, of what the season will bring? I think it's great for them to really recognize the routine that they need to have. Um, obviously, we'll be walking into a back-to-back, -back, so they understand what that feels like. Uh, the practices before we fly, understanding how to do that. So the rhythm of when they're waking up, when they're going to sleep, the treatment they'll need, the lifting they'll need, it's going to be great for them to keep learning the process of becoming a professional. And, you know, we have great uh, veterans in, you know, in Gary and T. Ross and, you know, uh, J.I. and Markel who have been through this process a ton to help them see the routine that they need to develop. Is it, was that a, an emphasis to put a back-to-back -back in the schedule this season to kind of give them an idea of what to expect, or was that maybe just kind of? I think that's I think that's how it worked out in some ways, and then we just have to experience it because that's is part of what the league is. You, you have to go through it in order to to figure out what you're going to do and what rhythm works for you. You mentioned turnovers, defending without fouling. Is there anything else you kind of want to see the team kind of grow in and, and, and progress through, through the next two games? Well, I think we're going to really hit home on those. I, I think we just, because if you, I don't want to go all over the board saying it's got to yeah. be this, it's got to be that. Like, where is our level of improvement? Can we cut our turnovers down from the 25? And, you know, can we get that down to 10 to 12? Um, the fouling, can we not put them on the free throw line 34 times? Can we defend without fouling and maybe put it to 18? You know, things like that, that, that they can recognize this is where we need to be in order for it to look, you know, like we're, you know, playing the right way. As of now, is everyone set, is everyone besides the guys that have been out set to, set to make the trip? Or, you know, the guys that we have, J.I., Markel, Gary, everyone, everyone's set to make the trip. Everyone is set to make the trip, yes. Uh, as far as managing Franz, do you, do you expect that you'll be available for one or both of these games? Is there anything I think, with managing? I think we're going to continue to monitor that. You know, I mean, I'm sure he'll be ready for one of the games. Uh, we'll see how he looks on, uh, feels on the back to the back and how we can just continue to monitor that, you know, that time that he spent, you know, being over in Eurobasket, just making sure we're going about things the right way, taking care of our guys' bodies. Jamal, obviously you're going to focus on what you need to do this preseason and your principles getting mm -hmm. strong. But when it comes to an opponent, what are the kind of the specific things that you think you'll be challenged with tomorrow night and that you want to see out of your guys for this specific opponent? No, that's a really good question. And, and I will always go back to we're going to continue to focus on us. Um, I really think we have to make sure our foundation stays the same and that we build the f strong foundation. Our guys, they played hard. Uh, they, played, they played with an intensity about them. Uh, but like we t I wanted to make sure that we understand that it's got to be about doing those simple things better. And if we continue to hit on those, talking about the turnovers and the fouling, let's, let's focus on those, and then we'll really dive into what that opponent does versus you know, us making sure that we take care of what we do. Everybody good? We're good. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Appreciate it. You played football for a while in your youth, right? How long did you play football until? Uh, my whole life um, until my freshman, after my freshman year in high school. When was the decision made to just switch fully to basketball? Was it like a conscious effort of like just focusing exclusively on this sport, or were you kind of mixed on it for a while? Uh, yeah, I would say by like, I knew before my freshman season of football that that was going to be my last year. I was like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, so I was kind of realizing I was getting a little too tall. Um, but I, I wanted to play one more year um, on varsity, and then I stopped after that. When you played football, I'm assuming you were a quarterback, correct? Do you kind of use some of the skills that you gained from football and the basketball court as far as the, the quarterbacking of, of the game? Uh, yeah, I definitely try to just with um, anticipating, you know, trying to think one play ahead, um, reading the defense, reading um, the guy you're throwing the ball to, trying to see, you know, whether you've got to lead them or, you know, throw them more, you know, on time, on target. Jalen also played football, as I'm sure you know. Can you kind of tell that he also had that football mentality when he's out there on the court? Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, he's a real tough player. Um, you know, also a real smart player. So definitely, he definitely shows it. Now that you have time to dissect the film, watch the film, talk with coaches, what did you think about your first preseason game for you personally? Uh, I think I did some good stuff. Um, I also think I made a lot of mistakes, obviously, making uh, some just silly turnovers, uh, being a little indecisive with the ball. All that, all that stuff, but you know, I wasn't disappointed or anything. You know, I kind of, I didn't expect to go out there and get 30 first game, but I also, you know, wanted to get a feel for it, and it didn't feel too fast, it didn't feel too, too, uh, you know, too much for me. So I felt good. You mentioned after the game that that you were running a lot more, you were involved in more pick and rolls than you were in college. Was that something that you know the coaching staff, especially uh, Coach Ramon Mosley, told you like we're probably going to do this more, like especially in terms of experimenting? just to try you out with something new, something different than you used to? 
I mean, I, I played out the pick and roll in college, but college is a much different game. You know, in the NBA is a pick and roll pretty much every possession. So um, it was just a lot more reps than I was used to game reps. So just getting used to that amount of uh, amount of possessions out the pick and roll um, and making making reads out of that. Julie, really just saw you working with Coach Mosley over there after practice, the on-ball pick and roll. Is that something you're really focusing on, being that guard coming off screens and pulling up for a shot or finding the big man rolling? Yeah, just making the, the simple read every time, trying to make the right read, uh, whether it's, you know, hitting the big in the pocket or, you know, swinging it one more or getting to my own shot. You know, that's something that I think I was a little indecisive on uh, in the first game was just being me, being aggressive. So me, you know, heading into these next couple games, just also reminding myself that, you know, my shot's the first look and then, you know, making reads after that. As, as a group, what do you guys feel like you need to kind of continue to improve on and work on and coming off of, off of Monday's game? Uh, I think we just got to play. You know, Coach told us, uh, you know, just to play with more swag, you know, kind of uh, in the first game we was kind of playing, you know, not to mess up or trying to do everything right, you know, first game of, of us playing together as a team. So we was kind of just on our tiptoes trying to do stuff right. Um, and so he told us, you know, just cut loose and play with swag this next game and, uh, you know, let everything else take care of itself. You had said about the other night, you know, making those reads games a little bit faster for you, obviously, first time playing in an NBA game. Being able to maybe dissect some film now, how much of an impact does that have on you being able to get activated and apply what you've learned so quickly? Uh, a lot, just because, you know, Watching the film, I didn't look sped up. I didn't look like I was super uncomfortable. I just, you know, when I got to where I got to, I just was a little indecisive. So knowing that I can get to wherever I want to get to is, is really encouraging. And now I just got to make the right decision when I get there. Do you get the sense this is a physical team, a team that's not afraid of some contact? Uh, yeah, I mean, we got a bunch of big, strong guys from the one through the five. So, you know, I think, you know, we're able to play physical. We're also able to play fast or, you know, uh, more finesse as well. So I think we can uh, go both ways. Last night we saw uh, Scoot and, and Victor play as potential top two picks slash uh, next year, and you had a chance to play against Chet last season. Obviously, you guys didn't know you were going to be the top two picks, but what do you remember about that matchup now, and, and especially now that you guys were the top two picks, do you kind of look at it a little differently? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say if you ask me and Chet, we would both say back then we thought we was going to be the top two picks, uh, and I'm sure Scoot and Victor feel the same. So when you have that, you know, that matchup, you know, it brings the best out of both players. And I watched the game, you know, both of them play ridiculously well. They look very good. So uh, it did remind me, you know, playing in Vegas in November against Chet, for sure. Is everybody good? All good? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Appreciate you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I guess, well, reflecting on the first preseason game, personally, what do you think about your own performance? Uh, I mean, I thought I played well. Uh, I thought I could have. I uh, played a lot better on the defensive side of the ball, on ball defense. Um, but I feel like my offensive game, I was under control. Um, I tried to get everybody in spots uh, on the second unit, was playing point guard um, for a lot of the game. So just trying to uh, run the team, get us in good offense. You know, I know T. Ross, like the back of my hand, Mo Wagner, like the back of my hand, the guys I was playing with, Chum. So it was just easy to get everybody involved. And then also when the opportunity presented itself score. You mentioned slowing down. I guess what goes into that? What goes into slowing down? What, I guess what do you do during the summer, the offseason, to make the game come a little bit slower? Are there drills you do, or uh, I probably say it's, it's a couple of drills you do. Um, really got to play. I mean, I played a lot this summer. Just hoop sessions, open runs, just getting a feel for the game. And there's also watching a lot of basketball. Like, I think a lot of guys don't watch basketball. So, you know, this summer, just watching full length games and watching film and, you know, seeing how some of the league's best point guards, guards control the pace, control the game and kind of play at their own speed. So just continuing to, to, to play, but to, to watch film as well. When you watch film on yourself last year, what were you saying, all right, this needs to improve or that? If there was the biggest thing you're like, this needs to improve, what was it? I would probably just say my pace. I would probably say slowing down was the biggest thing. I feel like I have a, a gift that a lot of people don't have, and that's my speed. But just knowing how to use it to my advantage um, is something that even during the summer, I was trying to test while in summer league and, you know, finally had some couple like last film sessions before this preseason game and kind of really just knew what I was going to do and was decisive about my decisions. And I'd like to continue to do that and build up that.
you get a sense. We hear we hear players all the time say like the game just kind of slows down for them. Um, like like what is that experience like? Like does, does, is it like a light switches and it, and it suddenly all makes sense or like how does how does how do you how do you how do you, you know the young players on this team kind of get the game to slow down for them like that? I would think I would say really just like I said watching the film. So yesterday, um, Memphis is a very nail help team. You know every time we drove in a lane, guys were standing at the nail. You know, two days prior, I was with the coach. We were watching film. I knew, you know, like, hey, they're going to be there. They're going to be every time. They're going to be reaching, swiping. So there's no need for me to go and drive in the two people in the crowd. Get off it, swing to the wing. Now they have to rotate. Now we get driving kicks, but it all starts with that first initial, you know, kick. But watching film and knowing is, is how I did it. Do you get a sense so far just from practices, preseason game, that you guys are going to be a physical team, just not a team that's not really afraid of contact, kind of mixing, mixing it up in the paint? For sure. I think uh, we're definitely a physical team. I feel like we need to be smart while being physical, though. Um, fouled a lot last night, uh, myself included. I had a really stupid foul. Um, but just uh, playing physical in the paint, um, playing physical on the perimeter, making the refs you know, have to you know, choose whether they're going to call a foul or not. But we can't just be reaching and, and, and sending them to the free throw line. I think they were free throw line a lot last night. Talking to Paolo before, he played football a little bit in high school. Uh, Jalen played football. Yeah. I don't know if you did. You didn't play football, right? I did a little, a little bit, bit, but I was the nicest one <laughs> among all of them. So. <laughs> Can you kind of tell those two guys were football, have football background, just in the way that they play, the way they see the floor? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I definitely, you know, I, I, I see with their aggression, they're not afraid to get hit. They're not afraid to get on the ground. Uh, they're not afraid to die for loose balls. Um, you know, even with just the, the IQ that they play with at times, you can see that comes from being a quarterback. Um, but like I said, we love that they're, they have that background. They were, they're so physical. It helps us. It brings that mentality to the rest of us. And, you know, we just we feed off a lot of people on the team. Arthur, when you talk about like, the continuity of uh, that second unit, guys that you're familiar playing with, with starters right now with Markel being injured, Franz kind of working his way back, what impact does that chemistry and continuity that you have with the second unit, how valuable can that be early in the season to get off to a good start? Uh, I feel like it's very valuable. You know, there's going to be there's going to be days where the starters, you know, can't make anything. There's going to be days where, you know, the second unit can't make anything. We have to have each other's back. So whether the starters come out slow and we pick it up, or whether the starters come out fast and, and we we come out slow, vice versa. So uh, you got to be familiar with you know who you're going to be on the court with for the most part, um, and you know be real with yourself about that and watch film of you and that person to make sure you know y'all have y'all's chemistry down. Is everybody good? Thank, Thank you. you.